because you can leave him alone on an island and be fine. However, the Jace might be drawing some attention. Obviously, the 2v2 with your uh, Lee Sin is going to be good in both mid and top. Uh, and, and as mentioned, the Sejuani, I don't As you already know. illustrated, this is to be expected uh, in that lane. Zayus is going to go to the skies. Summit is going to look to try and fight back here, but Conqueror procced, and the Jace is having just a great time. Oh, and Owner actually oh, uh, changed his pathing. Oh, another one comes through, and now the Flash Carrier is just throwing out abilities and getting summoner spells. Do note, though, Pioshek starting the upside of the map. We're going to have opposite sides here, as there might be a dive onto Summit, but Guma and Carrier, are they going to be okay with Pioshek moving in? Yeah, Summit trying to deal with this minion wave, but it is just too big. They do manage to get a teleport out. Can they kill him in time? That is going to be the one for one, as now the stun comes in. It's a two for one and TL trade up. Now Pyoshik making his move towards the bottom side. The Q's going to land. Gumiyushi's in so much trouble. And core JJ just said, I, I take down this team. It's my job, man. This does turn back up again on vision. Summon us out. There it is. And now Pyoshik is coming down. There the all out comes through. The Q's going to land. And Zayas. He knows that he's dead. The Q's going to land beforehand, and Pyoshik gets another. Yeah, Ona is going to get blocked out, so Pyoshik is going to be able to take this one. The arrow's going to connect, but Yon is going to be able to cleanse that one away. Ona's still looking for more. As the shockwave lands, Pyoshik is going to try and safeguard his way out for the hostile takeover. will cancel that, and Faker will grab his first of the game. Attention wards everywhere. Arrow going to connect onto APA. The hostile takeover comes through, and there is the chaining of CC. I don't know what you're supposed to do. The Maya Trag will go for a play on Zeus here. Wait, yeah, there's the scat of the week on Zayas, taking a lot of damage. The unleashed power comes from Pyoshik's gonna take away the kill, just barely. Might be looking towards play on Faker. Pyoshik does have his ult. Yeah, there is the Warthog flash. Scat of the week, not gonna be able to get the stun there, though, as Pyoshik is gonna be the target here. Faker wanting some revenge, gets the flash out of him in trade for the Shockwave, as now Zayas is looking to put in some support as well. Not going to be able to catch up. TL with three man strong here in the mid lane against the three of T. Oh, the flash forward from Zayas is going to be scattered. APA doesn't have a flash of his own though as the shockwave was looking to grab Pyoshik. But the speed up from Faker plus the speed up from Jace as Cole goes in. Storm. That is going to be the hostile takeover though. It's Gumiushi's just raining hell down on Core JJ. He's going to be the first one to fall. But Summit does get the all out on the carrier. Not going to be able to bail himself out of this one. Bit too expensive, but the Q3 is going to connect and now Gumiushi's in trouble. The arrow is going to connect onto Young, but it was Summit that was the problem. A shattering strike off as Gushik looking for Faker underneath the turret. He's going to get kicked into the wall as APA will just unleash just the power. Go back towards this bottom side of the map and try and clear up these minion waves. Core JJ finds Faker once again. Shattering Strike going to come through, but he's going to be pulled back by the Shockwave. The Dissonance comes in. There's the Magnus Storm as Faker is pulled forward. Can he find the Clockwork Windup? He doesn't need it because he's got Command Teleport attack. here. Yeah, now Faker, as you just mentioned, does not have his Flash available. The Dissonance doing a fair bit of work there because of the damage. Build is Scatter the Weak. He's not going to quite find the man in the mid lane. Kyosha is going to get slowed down, but he connects the Q, and I have a feeling that even Faker's not going to be able to make his way out of this area. Faker has teleport. There's 30 seconds on TL to make this play, and if they can lock this down, it could be a huge advantage for them. They need to keep Owner out of this pit, though, as APA, he's going down low. Core JJ looking for his opportunity. Can he play bounce? So they get him out of the pit, and it's going to be Pyoshik that locks down the Baron. Can they win the fight? There is the question. The hostile takeover gets the kill, utilizing Yun to kill APA. It's a disaster for TL and Zayas. He knows it. He's flashing over walls. Yun's going to be able to pick up one, though, with these Chakrams. I have a feeling that that might be all he's going to be able to get, but let's see what he can do here. He uses the last of his mana on the Moonshot. And uh, yeah, he's in an alcove, and I don't know whether he's getting out unless it's via the Death Chamber. So there it is. Yoshik, uh, deep in enemy territory. Going for it there as the kick does come through. Of course, Sonic Wave is going to connect as well. Core JJ looks for the opportunity, but the hostile takeover is there. Carrier always takes care oh. of his room. This Yoshik, he even goes golden. Going to be able to avoid the arrow with that. The rest of TL gets into and, position. And, and right now, TL is looking to peel. They're hoping to get the teleport and then oh. peel. They do not want to flip Carrier this. Carrier is just going to get caught out of position. Core JJ Let's is go. there, and that is going to be the pickoff to start this one. Even the Rift Skull is going to be the kick on the Faker from Pyoshik! It does not stop from this man today! And Ona down to 50%. Of course, Summit's got the Q3 and it's Jumping a double skull. for APA, and that's going to be a Baron for TL. They can make it happen. Will be incredible. Right now, though, Baron Powerplay actually working out okay. Ooh, Summit, Summit has to be able to escape this. Trying to get out of the way, but the Glacial Prison is going to connect. The arrow is going to sail wide. He tries to all out his way through. Does still have a bit of a shield, but Faker will. Play the fights correctly. 
And I think as well, that's why Karia also going for Radiant Virtue here on the uh, Renata, trying there. to build oh. the most Scatter the weak trying to come forward here. Summit just that's by himself, line. finds himself and Killer Magnus no more to three! It's gigantic and Summit's going all out! He's gonna get out of the fight as well with Kumiyushi! He's taken down Yon already! Core JJ! Both of them are gonna go golden and it's T1 that just roll over the top! of TL and even Summit will not be allowed to Five escape. Five-minute nail-biter with two Barons going over to TL. T1, well, they don't get the clean ace because Summit stays alive, but... They were that winning until they game. weren't. Chronicler, and that is going to be the Nexus turrets falling down. Our observers following the story of Summit, but it's the Nexus that needs to be addressed, and T1 are going to take the game, the first game of Swiss. I would have a lot to say about the top rumble and certain summoner choices. That would be Mooney if you guys have watched uh, the LCK. So would love to get his thoughts eventually. But it's uh, it's very interesting. You know, like I was saying before, these two LCK teams you can do with mid prio. If the enemy support is also going to come down into the mid lane or come up, I should say, as now Karia is here. He's got a combo going as the rest of Gen G is trying to come out and punish this. But it's actually T1 who are now in a 3v2 situation. Peanut has to flash away. Even Guma's joining the fight. And T1 are going to start this one off with a bang. And a little play down on the bottom side of flash away at the same time, but we got Owner looking for the solo, and he's just gonna dunk onto Peanut as Toby also getting into the action, not to Piranha. be left out. Speaking of which, Gumiusi seems to have no idea that this Rumble is in the bush, and now he's getting flashed on. Guma will be able to flash away from this one, and there's the ultimate just ticking down, and Doran will pick up the so solo. hard right now. They're only up 700 gold here, but the items they have on the carries they have are just so deadly. They're gonna actually take this turret, maybe more. Pays is just eating the damage. I mean, he just sits on the ball and Faker says thank you very Pretty, much. But it was uh, Kaisa, but Faker says I am different. I can challenge you. And that he will. He's just holding on, waiting for the one second for his shockwave. Doesn't even need it as Joby going to come in, dodging the shuriken as Faker. But he's in a lot of trouble. He's alone against three. And now Zeus is on the run to light, trying to continue on this one. Pays running into the rest of T1. They know that Guma can fall back to that mid turret is okay, Faker. Yeah, Faker in a lot of trouble here. Joby on the chase. It's really difficult to wait, get away from this. Akali he hits the shuriken as the shockwave lands, does not care. And owner can't do the river. anything. It looks like they do want to challenge this in the bottom side. Delight is a bit caught out, but he is recon, and now he's going back in. He's looking for the big engage with that rumble ultimate over the top. That's going to be the Kaisa just gone in this fight before it even began. As Jovi just running down the top side alongside Adoran, and that is a clean ace to the side of Genji. Goes the long way around, but even that bottom lane is pushed up for Genji. This is very well set up for them to just take the Cloud Soul, and that they will. They're just going to take down the objective. And in the front is Owner. He's just going to get ripped to shreds immediately. Guma doesn't even get to do damage in this fight. And Zeus on the run as well. Taking a punch in goes Guma trying to do something. But at this point, it just looks like Gen G are in total control of this game. And Faker just going to walk away with just his life. The rest of his team is gone. The rest of his team is gone. And this game, I think, likely gone with it. And once again, same MO from Genji. Control the choke point, kite back to Baron, put Delight in the front. He looks like a squishy target. Maybe you can push push onto this Rakan, but Delight will turn on you on a dime, and they just cannot close the distance. Owner tries, ultimately without Faker's help. But like I was saying before, everything needs to work together with T1, and if there's no vision, if there's no choke point control, you just cannot do it against Genji. Oh boy, Faker trying his best, but I think Gen Z have their sights on the Nexus as a massive equalizer over the top. Just the cherry on top as Gen G dominate from about seven minutes onwards to take down this best of one against T1, and they will move on. Side, they can get Jax pretty ahead, and then he's going to have an opportunity to be a big side lane threat later on to buy time for Zeri to be that late game carry. The composition here, I feel, for C9 is pretty vanilla, although Zeri's not as common, Beth a little bit rarer. You knowing know Blabber was topside, knowing he was pushed out there, he's forced to flash and budge. Now level 6 is up. Uh -oh. oh, he's taken way too much damage from that equalizer already. He's going to go straight into the dead chamber. Recall and now be on the way to Rift Herald, which wouldn't give C9 time to kill it. 2v2 at the top side, the equalizer getting some big value, and now Owner is going to join up with this one, as they do want to extend this play, but not sure if they want to overextend as Sven has come on in. And the Black and Drag goes in out to the recovery. 
upon his owner. Just doesn't give a damn. He has Karia behind him. Gets him in the death chamber. Oh, the man. Comes out and everybody is going down on the side of C9 in the top lane. T1 just burning them to a crisp in the top lane. Well, they just use the spot pressure, push people back in the river, and look for a fight or drop the Herald mid. Well, they're over the wall. They're looking for Sven as he is going to get dunked on. And he's got one hope, his ultimate ability, but that's not going to do enough as he was alone. One over before. the wall and throwing cues at Berserker and Berserker juking them. There was never like a counterplay that C9 would be able to make. Uh oh, but a lot of trouble. He flashes onto the other side of the equalizer. Zeus just tanking this one up. Fudge is still alive underneath this turn. He's just going to get flagged from the heavens. Many mechanically just talented players around him. Hold his own in mid lane and press his F keys yeah. really good in talk. He's been pressing his keys pretty well. Owner, once again, I, maybe it's showboating, I'm not sure. Owner in a little bit of trouble as he does have some help from his squad, but he is going to be able to get away. Blabber gets hooked by the feathers, and now there's a massive equalizer on the entirety of C1. Just trying to, C9 rather, trying to retreat out of this one. That's a huge play comes out from oh. Kyria, and they turn this one around, and even the tower can't get into this one, as Kyria will disable that. This might just be a clean ace going into the hands of T1, and that it is. Nobody will fall on the side of T1. An insane win here for T1, We've but we also pretty good one. Uh, 24 minute games as well. And, uh, you know, Wolf was talking about it before. We're on pace for a perfect game. That's just going to be Berserker dead for free. At what cost, That's pretty, pretty good. He got the ball. Oh, no. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's, he's being chased down here by owner. I think that carry is just going to let him do the 1v1 thing. And there he goes. Dunks. Hard to criticize for, for C9. There really is no correct play. Yeah, now Faker is just doing a dance in the enemy base at this point in time. Picks up the quickness and uh, just kind of shoves it in their face as T1. You know, they're on pace to try to break one of the fastest games that we have had here in the Swiss stage. The turret of the Nexus are already going down. C9, they're going to have to make one last stand and they get the knock up here on a Zeus who loses a total of zero health at this point in time as the Bard ultimate comes out as well. The carry is having a lot of fun at this point. Fudge is in that back line, but he's just going to be ripped to shreds by the Feathers once again. As C1 will play with their food, they will get what they deserve after this victory. As down will go the Nexus, T1 will move on to 2-1 and one in the Swiss stage. Really dominant showing by T1. This is the team that T1 fans wanted to have show up at the World Championship. When it has something like Renekton, point and click, you can't really mess those up, and it makes it easy for the Nidalee to get in there and get the ball rolling, because she needs to stay ahead of the pace of the game. She needs to lead the way in terms of tempo. If she falls behind, Red Buff still at about 1,000 HP. Owner taking some damage, gets ignited, has to continue falling back. Shun still trying to find a little bit of poke oh. here. They engage. Oh, nicely catching Owner up, but now Shun's going to back away. Owner with a flash out, trying to stay alive, but now Elk is under pressure, down to 100 <laughs> HP. They're nearly going to kill him. It's first blood. Back Back over to T1, the invade crashes and burns. Now Shun has to try to get away. The flash is already down. Can he escape the power of the Kench? He's been hit with the lick, the flash of the wall. How many licks to the center of a Nidalee pop? It's only gonna take one more. Shun falls, Karia grabs the second kill of the game for T1. And he ain't done yet. Gumayushi's coming in. Karia's got a red buff. On is continuing to be slowed. T1 may have just won the game in two and a half minutes. Oh, oh wow. wow! I barely live. We'll just kill up the second crab. Bit of an oh. engage. There comes the abyssal dive, but now the counter attack with the crash. Oh. The spear goes wide. Gumiyushi gets away, and now another counter play coming out from owner. But Carry is killed instead. BLG are on the board. Finds a tongue lash on the Yagao. No more follow-up here just yet. Nice root coming out from Guma Yushi. Now they're going to go in. There's the Wombo combo. T1 ain't going to kill anybody just yet. Yagao barely gets away. Owner's ready to swoop in for the Cataclysm. And on gets turned off. Guma Yushi flips the switch. And now Shun tries to fire back. Massive double kill over the Alongside top. Alongside Faker, they are identical right now. And he's only at 13 CS. The Sen are doing wonders for T1. Yeah. Total damage. Zay is topping those charts, but it's pretty easy to do when you're Nara against the melee. Flashing forward. Mega Nara into the wall. Wall up. Rock toss. One more hit. will do it. Zayas solo kill. Power spikes, but also it doesn't get better for you if you wait. But there's a pick. Zayas getting jumped on. They're throwing the kitchen sink at him. Beautiful shutdown from BLG. Back up That's towards the top side of the jungle. TP coming in now. T1 regrouping. 
low health bars on BLG. Zeus is taking towers right now. Zeus did not join. T1 said, we're fine without you, buddy. All right, pin is low. Still lots of free firing damage coming up from Gumiyushi. Remember, there is no ulti available for Alcon. And goes in, finding a magnet storm onto three, but he ain't gonna find any kills just yet. On is gonna die first. They take out the jungler second. Ben ain't gonna get it. Shun is down. T1, run them over. The range brings him back into the fight to wreak havoc. Carrier, he's oh, not done. Oh no, he even stops Ben's recall. If he gets this croc here, there it is. A pistol dive takes him out. We'll do enough work on the inhibitor here in the top side themselves. Zay is about ready to transform. Magnet Storm was used for a whole lot of nothing. Owner's got Yagao locked down, but Owner's gonna drop instead. They'll trade him back for the mid laner, and Shun falls too. Now it's two inhibitors down, and a 4v3 for T1. The souls are all over the place, but they're the souls of BLG players, as T1 is not stopping here. Elk may have been the one to take out Owner, but now the push just keeps going. Zayas will grab another on Ben as Elk has the killer instinct right back into his own fountain. He flashes away just to live. <laughs> T1 just stop BLG in game one. Gary is having fun too. Oh, he is. <laughs> I mean, from start to finish, what a great performance from T1. We talked about it earlier in the cast, but it does feel um, like... But the Jinx, and specifically the ability of the Tom Kench to keep it protected, is probably the biggest thing I'm going to be looking at. Yeah. I, I actually love watching Ori Syndra too, because there's so much... Has no idea. Shouldn't coming around. There's the stun. Scatter the weak. Faker tries to flash, but Yagao's got him for first blood. Counterattack from Owner, but... Doesn't look like there's a whole lot to get here. Nah, the, the Jarvan's probably not strong enough for this. Owner! Loses his own flash. As the jungler's owner pathing away as he moves towards his wolf camp. Bin? No. <laughs> no. Is that, this saying don't? That does oh, he have. is! Oh, it does! Oh. Zeus went back oh, in. Oh, no flash, Baker. Baker doesn't get hit by the scatter of the week, but it doesn't even matter. The unleashed power should be enough. Faker's just buying some time. Beautiful from that BL. Point. Both of those ultimates incredibly effective at setting up some plays as Ben wants to go in on Zeus, who knocks him back into the cask. But the Jack's still so strong, man. Hang on. Such an iconic pick Here for Ben, and he's not afraid to use it. Zayus gets killed again. Ben is just tearing him he apart. coming in, but it's from Yagao, who just picked up the Leandries. Owner's going to lose the opportunity for his combo, and the Dragon's going over to T1. But what about the fight? On trying to get away. Guma wants to get excited. Beautiful engage on the Yagao. T1 may lose their jungler, but they're going to get three and a Drake back for it. It only takes a single fight. For them. If you're looking at what's going on up there, Bin could be a serious issue. And if you're BLG, that's something you know you can play around as the game goes forward. Oh, it's going to be caught by Shockwave. He could not live through it. And Faker's on the now, board. Now, like, they've kind of lost that control. It's not over yet. Oh, nice catch. BLG, more money on Yagao. MasterCard lane economy snapshot. BLG actually start pressuring that tier one in mid. But with the range on Gumiyushi, he's going to have enough wave clear fake up. Nice, the Shockwave going to catch on, force out the ulti there from the Alistar. That's all they're going to get though, trade of ulti, Shockwave for the Unbreakable Will. Look at top though, you see once again Shun hovering around Bin, looking for a potential play, maybe a dive. But no, it looks like with the wave clip from Zeus, Flash. Oh, Owner just flashing in, looking for the damage here onto Elk. Nearly finds him, Super Mega Down the Rocket, oh. gonna get it. But the flag will be planted on the corpse of the enemy AD carry. BLG trying to get away now. He's behind them with a big flank. He's looking for the flank, beautiful two-man stun. Gumiyushi gets hit by it, Ons coming around from the side. Guma's gotta be careful, but Shun flashes back over the wall, off to the left, keeping himself alive as Elk is trapped in the Cataclysm here, yet again the feathers fly. Owner tries to stay alive, a dunk from the Super Mega Death Rocket, a double kill of an Agumayushi. He's excited, and he just can't fight See, him. the mountain goats up on those no. tiny cliffs, <laughs> like, it is crazy. Oh, right. oh, the oh. they're trying to catch Owner this time, but instead, it's on, and Gumayushi's unstoppable. They found Yagao! Shut down for Faker! Enemy man! He's right for him. The two bouncers here, Karia and Seiyu's gonna make sure He's getting nowhere near that thing. He's not getting nope. an opportunity to even try. Oh, but they got it with the tongue lash. Oh. Elk has to flash over the wall. Elk with a potential massive outplay. And Zayas goes into the stasis, but he keeps himself alive. Gumiyushi is dominating. And Ben will not find the stun here with a counter strike. The answer from all of T1 is yes. Faker with his crown shattered. 
Okay, owner with the engage, forcing the flash out of Yagao. Beautiful flag and drag right back out over the wall. Bin gonna be the target now as On looks to try to provide some disruption. Shun back over with a ball breaker, but he ain't gonna find a whole lot. Re-engage from Owner. Stop watch to stop them in their tracks. Oh my goodness, it's T1! Just absolutely rolling over them. Double kill for Guma. Triple kill for Guma. Oh, the action. Good. Back in the action yet again. Shun trying to get away. Super Mega Death Rocket not going to find the target, but Gumi Yushi finds the kill on Elk instead, and they'll happily take that. Bin trying to disengage with a leap strike back to his jungler, but now he's going to be thrown up in the air by Owner yet again. Shut down over to Guma Yushi. T1 may have just won the game. Another convincing fight for T1. BLG just, they, they have no options in the fight. T1 are just consistently getting the better of them. Shun is forced to retreat. The TP now coming in from both Zayus and Faker. T1 are ready to end it here. The early game was tough. The top lane was rough. And for BLG, it was not enough. T1, the greatest team ever in League of Legends, is ready to bring it back and do it again. They're on the Nexus, and they're on their way to the quarterfinals. A bit of a revenge for MSI. T1 a will bit. take this series over BLG. Kuma Yushi, incredible performance on the center. 11, zero, three, and just listen to that crowd. This man, hey, he was the main character from Arcane in this <laughs> game, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, he was. The crowd fully in support of T1. Tyler and Nilo, very feast for famine. Synergizes with Cinna fantastically, yes, but not their traditional safe hyperscaling AD carry. Very vulnerable as we get later into the game. Yeah, and the Nila specifically is something that T1 themselves suffered defeat from. It now was owner is not there, and the jungler's coming up, and Zika's six, so they're gonna look for an all in. Deus. That's the ulti, but extra movement speed. We're looking away from the flag and drag. Quick flash out to safety. Instantly just gonna ult for the extra movement speed. Now the damage coming through for the Gwen Tarjan. Look at the flash in. Zayus still living for now, but first blood on the top side for LNG. Is it guys? Carrier. T1, three members in the area, ready to set up. Scout on the flank, however, gonna look for the shove. He's gonna manage to catch only Zayus in the meantime. Baker still standing strong. Shockwave getting good damage down. T1 quick to force the fight. Zika not powerful enough to force that one through. T1 taking one and might just turn right back to the Herald. There and has taken two plates. So the Orianna is more than a thousand gold ahead, and the Herald's now gonna get dropped. Yeah, Herald gonna come crashing down here, only gonna further extend Faker's lead, as you can see on the bottom of your screen there. Scout doing what he can to just push everything back, but now they might just go in for the counter punch. Scout pulled away, forced to flash out to safety. The Herald still connects. Now, Faker gonna be in trouble, but again, there's no follow-up damage here. Oriana just sitting pretty. Thank you very much, Tarzan. That was terrible. And now what the oh. hell? T1! They're living rent free! He in just the tried head. to rush it, and the answer is gonna be yes. Zika's already on it, and T1 are coming, so the fight is now, gonna be on. Have to be careful about locking themselves in the pit. Keep your eyes on Guma if he gets to the back line. Owner now stepping forward. Dragon Soul stolen, and now it's Guma Yushi looking to tear through the entire team. Goes golden right to the back Click line. Zeus continuing to step up, but Zeka needs to be the difference maker. Zeka needs to hold on, but there are too many members free firing into the Gwen. Zeus stands strong on the back side of the fight. Taking down so many members on the side of LNG. And Zika tries heroically. Dude, you but lost topside around these engages at Herald, around this engage in mid lane. Your bot lane in the 2v2 doesn't really stand much of a chance. Your perma pushed in. So even once this Blitzcrank got out of lane, there wasn't much recourse for him. And T1 on the push. Zayus may be in trouble. Zayus off to the side, but LNG has to be careful about overcommitting. Zayus still just taunting them, teasing them. Blitzcrank, can the hook come out? Cataclysm locking him in. They will connect, but he pulls it back upon the Osis. Guma Yushi ascending to Godhood in that moment as LNG are torn to shreds. T1 too far ahead. They make it look effortless. It's a clean ace for T1. Baker shockwaves the minions just to speed up the demise of LNG. The Korean fans erupt here as T1 going to claim game number one. Busan will not be silenced yet. Incredible start for T1, LNG kicking themselves after that early game, and to be honest, 
It was a mess there as we got later and later into the game. Gonna have to go back to the drawing board as we get ready for Interesting, because, you know, when we saw these kind of lanes back in the day, it was a lot of double Halo Blades, you know, all about the early levels, all about the aggression, really utilizing that power to try to harass someone like the Rakan down before they can even look at used his TP back to lane. Potential window here to try to capitalize on Faker. Still has the flash available. The healing as well. Can he find a target? He's going to flash back under the tower. Shock Blast there. Faker making it out to safety. Scout now looking to fall off the healing. Now coming in, trying to find the one for one. But Scout will stand strong. Getting the kill. Advantage of Zika. Step oh. forward. The combo coming through. The abduction of the Kitty Cats. Once again, forcing out the flash. The snare will connect. But there is no follow up there. Instead, the Herald immediately going to get dropped. T1 now looking to grab two plates here. Flash in though. Owner's not happy with just two plates. Scout now going to be in trouble. But they can't quite find the name. And Faker going forward. Looking for a bit of revenge. After the first tower dive, he will find the kill on the scout as the Herald crashes. Out, and they get the plates with the crash. Chunk now stepping in. The flash away, the flash to safety, the slows. Big Kuma locked down. Should get taken out here. Chains of Corruption going wide. He will not be able to get anything back. Crucial kill over to Gala. And really big play there from G, Zika. For example, be really successful. Why Weibo was able to get uh, such big leads consistently. It's this bot side counter picks as Zeus goes in on Tarzan. Tarzan. Comes through with the twisted advance. Say it's getting lower and lower. We're gonna try to burn through. Hack trigger isn't going to be enough. Flash out to safety. On the backside, Kuma managing to land the ultimate. A little bit of follow-up damage. Zayos coming back in for the extra healing. Double TP now going in. Faker is there. Lockdown come in, and Zik is gonna try to find one. Faker is telling away the ultimate. That's the needlework coming out. LNG being pushed back by the side of T1. Faker's stolen Maokai ultimate will connect, but no further. Fight breaks out. But look at the health. Tarzan is incredibly low. There we go. Yeah, stepping a little bit too far here, but still has the flash. Holds on to it, won't even use it. Gonna be the heal invested instead. T1 still gonna start this up. Zayas does have TP available. And it looks like Soul Point, 17, not even 70 minutes in, is gonna go to T1. Yeah, the initial play looked like it was going LNG's way, but with the first TP coming through, Tarzan had to retreat. They couldn't chase in and try to finish off Zayas. And it did mean that despite the trades back and forth of these summoner spells, of these cooldowns, LNG though have a pretty good position here themselves with Zika on the side. Tarzan will try to retake some of this vision. And LNG are going to try to get the Scuttle and see if they can find the better angle for the engage. Scuttle down. Gala great guns for a fight. In terms of sustained DPS, he absolutely outclasses Guma. But if it just comes down to a poke battle, he will not come out on top. LNG forcing the issue. Hong doesn't have a good angle to engage at all, though. Like, look where he's playing. He's almost like trying to mark Zayas, but he needs to get the back line. They're going to go. Flash in. Owner Gala manages to make it out safety. Isolated for now. Look for Zayas over the wall. Zayas on the back line. But Gala, Gala. Gala forced to safety. Shock rooms stacked. Zayas can't find the angle, but the shutdown coming through for Baker. T1 taking the fight anyway. Gala looked good, but Gala did not matter. T1 finding the exchange. And even with Gala, sir. T1 has to be careful about group for the Infernum ultimate. Owner a little bit chunked here, and Hong's looking for that angle. They're going to try to pinch Zayas. Dragon resetting a little bit here. Both sides backing away. It's just a battle of poke. Both sides hoping to bait the other one and depressing the trigger. The charm now coming through. Will it be enough to lock down Zayas? No is the answer. Scout given to the Aatrox as tribute, and now Gala's in trouble. T1 coming alive. They see the window of opportunity. They see the weakness in the armor of LNG, and they tear it Asunder, there is no room left in the fight. T1 will take everything they want in this game too. Hung, a last desperate effort, but the TP's coming mid. I mean, that's gonna be game. They're gonna throw for the end. T1 put LNG in a lose-lose position. You have to contest for this objective. Elder, just too much power to give over. But T1, patiently prodding, find the angle. And the fervor of the fans in Busan, will not force T1 to play over-aggressive. They keep their discipline, they remain composed, they close out cleanly versus LNG in Game 2 and bring us to match point, a semi-final spot on the line. What a performance from T1 thus far. Dominance in Game 1. And for Game 2, the word that comes to mind is control. Absolutely. Also think that with the limited engage, the only reliable two you have is a Sejuani, um, because your the Milio is only going to serve as counter engage. It is going to become so hard to play this game if you lose control early on. And when I look at the level no of aggression, she had to ban Ash every single time. As Tarzan and owner are going to meet, walking in face to face. Sustained damage, neither side has that much, but right now a lot of damage coming in for Tarzan. Owner now just going to zoom his way out to safety. That's the phase rush procking. Buckler coming in. 
Both sides squaring up with a big old golem here. Flash in, whoa, bang, first blood! Owner living up to his play name! Ghost when generally against Renata, you always have almost to play six. Climb. Tarzan looking down here on the bottom side. Good initial damage. Nice pullback on the shockwave. Guma still standing for now. The bailout will buy enough time for them to get one kill back. Tarzan still standing, and that means Guma will fall. LG find an angle on bottom side, but here comes the hostile takeover. And oh, Finger knocking two, but the tower. It does not fire back. Owner does not have the angle to fall upon the Gala. He will just barely be able to find a Gala now trying to make it out to safety. T1 needs to get a kill back and return. Gala goes up. Gala goes down. But for now, he is still standing. Oh, oh. finding the dissonance. It is. Finding the speed up. Gala making it out and hope sparks anew for the Another side of return play here from Tarzan. And repeat. Finding the lineup. Finding the angle. Instant damage coming through for Ifalio so they can get the root as well. If they could find the mark, but nice counter punch coming in from Guma using the ult to stop the play in its tracks. Gala continuing to step up. Desperate to get a little bit more here, but has to be careful. The mark now coming through. Bar is good damage. Guma wants to finish it, oh! and he gets it! Absolutely outplayed in the 1v1. Guma finds the kill. He hits. A... He's playing just normal AD Varus, so these longer fights are so much stronger as they're still fighting. Owner now trying to make his way out to safety. No dash is available, so the steadfast presence won't do much. Faker now zooming in. The scoop goes a little bit wide. The knockback ready to go just in case the counter punch comes. Engage will be denied. T1 can just set their sights on the Drake. A bloody back and forth. They push him out, sure. Tarzan gonna get away, but T1 will take the objective right off the back of it. I'll get all around. Tarzan is sniffing, but it's gonna be too little. It's gonna be too late. So it's about the fight. If it's about anything, on to Kuma. Follow up is there. Owner there not go. gonna connect. Zik on the backside. Hostile takeover is clean. And again, there's no cleanse available for Gala. It stops the play for now. Zika trying to find one. Owner surely should fall here. Still standing because of the bailout, but he will eventually die. LNG get the kill. That is a big investment, though. Yes, they Stage. get the kill. Fakers on his way. Alti available for Tarzan in just a couple of seconds here. Counting down, ticking away. Yeah, they can't do it. Baker gonna try to cover early ult to try to make it on safety. T1 backing off, are they gonna kill? LNG linger for a bit too long, not respecting the burst, and here comes Baker, Tarzan. Getting shredded by the soldier. One more is gonna do it. The Emperor of Shereen. Right from the get-go, allowing Zayus to play basically an isolated 1v1, which with the Jace, Baker he's always gonna win. In the darkness, coming through the pushback on Zayus to the skies, dunked down, and T1 just running the rift. It's a little bit wide, but the second half of the route on the chain of corruption will catch. Owner wants to keep this 1v1 going. Scout now retreating, Scout now coming in. Stun goes in. The pullback nice Cancel. from Scout, buying a bit more time. And now again, the follow-up, the steadfast presence. And who is steadfast if not T1 in the face of elimination? Three back-to-back -back clean early games as they fight against LNG. And the only saving grace there. I feel like, th has this happened every single game? Like, free yep. Drakes? This early on is Tarzan. Tarzan! That's your side of the rip, Zeus. Oh, back wait. away, Gala off to the side. You can root up two. Follow up Otto's there, Roots, no, this buying a bit more time with the hostile takeover, now they're now autoing each other, they're just killing each other, LNG, the fight instantly turned to beautiful Scout. from Terry, but Scout can't get the damage, it is not enough. T1 are going to keep the chase going, Faker's going to take the hex, no he wants to wrap behind them, look at mid, mid they're going to try to get both towers, they'll prevent the charge on the tier 1 by killing it off, so they're going to push in that herald and go for two towers off of the play, and off of the delay there from T1, they get a kill, they take two towers, they're going to get a third charge mid as well, and they got the hex stick Drake! With all that going on as well, Soul Point again at 18 minutes with a Hexec Soul. And most of these games have been about and right here, right now. How do they get in? Can they make it work? Tarzan stepping forward, frontlining. The handshake pulls them back. The Baron already gone. There's no fight left. It's still Owner goes in, finds the knockup on two. They cut the back line. They're just forced to back away. But again, discipline is the story for T1. They got what they came for and they walk away. T1 get everything. They get the TP off Zika, they get the bear and they're pushing down that top lane and they're gonna be able to answer mid. Maybe you lose the tier one, but look at Kerry setting up for play. Hostile takeover, shockwave there. Hostile takeover, a little bit of damage here. Faker off to the side, owner backing away. Just the tier one and the objective bounty taken. This is a five versus four. Zayas is just pushing in the top side of the map. That's their most fat member, he's not even there. Yeah, and it's something that Guma talked about in his interviews, you know, that time away, giving him the space to become the player that he wants to be, to become greater, is now Faker breaking in the mid lane. Again, Tarzan can fish for the pick, they might be able to find it here. Can they get Faker down? The pushback's still there. Faker trying to slide, trying to glide out to safety. The root is there. The damage follow-up is not, however. Caria, the flash in, the handshake onto Scout. You will not take his mid laner. It's any of the plays from T1. And it's Hextech Soul with 
a on-hit Varus, Azir with Nashers, and a monster fat Jace! And Zeus, full confidence play, there's no reason he needs to do that! But he does it anyway! Zeus puts Zika six feet under and he's looking right, to see- Right, we have four representatives from the same region. But T1, it doesn't look like the pressure's getting him whatsoever! Feels like a victory march down the mid lane. Inhibitor knocked down. Again, T1 taking their time, don't need to overcommit. They have the waves on their side, they have the soul on their side, the gold lead, every advantage they could want. No reason to risk anything. It is slow, it is steady, it's controlled, it is massive damage. Gala firing back with the Inferno Multi just to generate a little bit of space, but Scout getting chunks down. Don't even need a wave, just tearing through the tower as life bars shrink on the side of JDG, or LNG, excuse me, hope dwindling. JDG on the minds of T1 looking ahead to the semifinals. Zayus just isn't missing. It's ridiculous. It's like 20 shock blasts in a row that this guy has hit. He's monster fed. And he is just having them Handshake downloaded. Handshake back, connected down to the wall. Zayus firing up with so much damage. Down! Go Zika! The pushback is massive! Gala knocked out at T1 eyes on the prize. And it's the God of Thunder! He loves his Lightning Champions, and Jace was always his most iconic! And in this final game, Zayus shows why he still pulls it out! The final push now, LNG, one last desperate hold. But they've got nothing left. And even as every other LCK team falls away, Faker stays standing! T1 stays standing! The last light of the LCK burns bright, and Busan is a head to the semifinals. And what a setup for semis this is, because I had faith in T1 coming into this series, but I thought that this was going to be a hard-fought battle. But T1, they threw. A bunch of curveballs at uh, LNG, and they just weren't able to find a consistent response. It looks so difficult to answer T1 in the draft. They were of course, this is the first gen of Worlds 2023 picked up here. Guma slamming it down in the semifinals. And there's so much CC with this bottom lane as well. So much pick potential with a Bard plus Jin. You can try and get that early lead in lane against an Alistar. That up. Now they know! Total control of the lane, but just now sees Owner. Owner mounting up on the way in, looking to lock him up and take him out. 369 still standing for now. Will he burn the flasher or just accept his fate? Trying instead to turn and burn on Zayas, get a little bit more health damage. Just accepts his fate. First blood for the side of T1. Nice. They won't have the opportunity. We do see Knight already here. Doesn't look like T1 is going to be able to contest us. Zayas going for the solo bolo and he just gets the kill! What? That is, that is not a comment diff right but there. But off the he's still relatively squishy, all things considered. Zayas still stepping forward with the Infernal Chain, looking for the lockup. Tempered Fate now coming in, isolating Knight. Knight right in the back line, and Owner immediately with the follow-up engage. Zayas still standing. Now finally the Vi is going in, but it might just be too little too late. Knight, oh, fancy feet to the back of the fight. Zayas ticking, burning, but the shutdown is 369. But now they're just fish caught in the barrel, waiting on the slaughter of the curtain call. T1 stepping in and dominating the Herald fight. They force all of their flashes over the back of the pit. They expects the play from Kanavi. Charge forward, lock up. Ulti used in the previous fight. 369 still burning him down. Zayus running for the hills, the rumble, Boom. and the buy. Get it done on the top side. A bit of hope for JDG. Almost 2K in their favor. They're not willing Dragon. to give up this drink for free. Owner into the pit, and he will steal it right out of Kanavi's hands. Curtain call over the wall. There is nowhere for that buy to go. Guma now on a killing spree, missing running for his life. Locked up into the wall. Equalizer used just to keep the support alive. T1 make it look effortless there. They just come in, yoink, thank you so much for the dragon. Owner steals it away, and they also get oh the... No. Never mind, Owner. he gets a freebie back. Staying a bit too long, stun now coming through. 369, careful not to overheat too quickly. Continuing to walk forward, making sure now he has the flames better to try to bring it back. Shockwave there, Carrier not quite able to connect. Maybe they have the damage. Faker's gonna be in trouble missing now, pushing him back, trying to sacrifice. Oh. 369 burns down to the ignite of Carrier. Missing, killed as well, and every play that looks like it favors... There's no pure big big tank on the enemy team Temper to fate there. a bunch of armor. Should be an easy fall up now. Carrier taking his time, waiting for the wall to try to line it up. He doesn't even need to! Zayas's damage is disgusting! Pretty resources. The crash in mid lane already happened from the Herald. The tower slowly but surely crashing. 
rather breaking down now as Dragon still aggroed here. Carrier playing on the edge. Ruler going oh. through the portal. Feathers fly, but to little effect as JDG just have to run the pullback over the wall. Now they're just trying to isolate and take out Zayos. Big golden flux for the side of JDG. Can they take the fallout fight? Already the equalizer burned. Carrier running through the magical journey. Everybody trying to get up, but Odor will be denied. Odor cannot find the escape, but it doesn't matter because T1 are there in time. Missing trying to fire back. Kumi Yushi out of ammo, desperately trying to reload, but here comes the Kunai. Here comes Knight to flash away to safety. Three shots left in the barrel. Manages to lock him down. Play on the edge, missing as he stamped Baker Baker's coming! Far. Baker on the flank. No shockwave. A lot of help. Has to play careful here. Knight, no ultimate. Needs to make his way out of this one. The lock up there from Guma from so far away. Oh, no. Owner coming in. The pullback on the missing. Trying not to stick around for too long. One taken down already. Knight now going in, trying oh. to turn it back. Guma says not today! He might just not have enough damage to finish off these priority targets. Carrier going in. Lineup not quite there, but the captive audience now coming through. Missing, trying to back up. Shockwave pulling back just to kill the Alistair, but they get the tier two as well. The range Outer of power. The, the defense is here for JDG, crumbling. Carry a perfect predict on the shuriken flip means the lockup is there on the night. He goes into the shroud. Kanabi ready to give his life to protect his mid laner. They're now going into the back line straight on Guma. Locked up with a temper flame, doesn't quite connect to the Jin, burns to the ground. JDG trying to hold on to hope, but here is Zayas. Here is the top laner right as they need him to crash down the pull back on the Infernal Chains. Ruler. Missing goes in, but he cannot find the edge. Ruler still stands, but he doesn't have the angle to attack. He doesn't have the angle Fish into the, the fight. Here. Already got one advantage. Tempered fade onto Kanavi is big. The lineup is there. Zayo's immediately going to look to knock him down. Can they find it? Kanavi now going right back into Zayo's owner in the area. Gig damage coming in for the Dark and Blade. Missing on the backside, trying to buy some space. But the shockwave oh. is clean. And in comes the curtain call. It is Zayas wreaking havoc on all of JDG to finish the fight. T1 looking to break over the base of JDG. That's a clean ace. That's got to be the game. I think they can push for the end. Halt construction on the Golden Road immediately. T1 have something to say about it. From start to finish, they have been in the driver's seat from the creative pathing in the early game of owner Ten to shut seconds. down. 369. T1 have their eyes on the prize, and the prize alone. A spot in the finals, or at least one game closer. T1 showing up massive in this first game. Missing and Kanavi should not be enough. The Nexus lower and lower. T1 drawing first blood in this series. Well, well, well. Down there. And with T1 one game ahead, now on red side, we know what JDG is likely to pick in the next game as well, pushing T1 back there. You have to hope, if you're a JDG fan, that JDG can show us more, that they can match more, because if T1 find the same advantage that they did against LNG... And that with huge the achievement. Carrier on the level one is going to lead the way with the Ash. Thing, taking so much damage. We're now Nine. continuing to free fire to Carrier. Carrier has to be careful. Will he be forced to flash over the wall for now? Standing strong. 369 on the backside. Has popped the Ghost. 1Q stack going, but he can't really find an angle in. Has to be careful. Third stack. Missing incredibly low. Q through the creeps. Trying to pick up some souls. Owner getting lower and lower. 369 for Zayas up to the He's side. But two. Owner <laughs> getting burned down. Owner level two. He flashes in. They get first blood. It's traded back. Knight running for his life now. Two kills to the side of T1. And T1. Outside. This game has it all. Now we got a Maokai gank in the bot lane. Ruler has to be careful. Just barely gets around the trap. But Owner stepping forward. The cleanse. Is it going to be enough? Walking in. One more out of the kick. We get another flash in. Carrier seals the deal. Missing. Trying to fire back. But seen the scene in Arcane, you know exactly how this goes. Flash in, hits him with the Fist of Cups double kill. Going over to Kanavi. Kanavi's gonna help him get another turret plate. Alting, no one there to body block for missing. That could be disastrous. Zayas behind, Zayas behind as well. Kanavi gonna be in trouble. Ruler now trying to run for his life, kiting this one out. Zayas keeping his eyes on the Callistas. Kanavi in the backside will find one. Knight with the shockwave at least managing to lock down the trade kill. Trick slash this meaning owner has perfect setup for an ulti to kick this fight off. Arrow gonna connect first. Kanavi now locked up, brings it back into the rest of the team. Owner in the midst of everybody. And Zayo's now on the way in. Kanavi's still standing for now. Ruler pulling back his support. And now JDG looks to turn. Unstoppable is 369. They know that they've gotten what they came for. JDG now backing off. Do not want to overextend in the play. This is huge. Zayo's using the Scryer's Gloom just to see if there's anything spotting him. Another aggressive engage here. Carry a locked up though. 
Knight finds the shockwave under one, the TP now coming in, that's 369 to the backside, looking to isolate the rest of the team, one kill already going down, Guma off the ribs, Carrier running for his life, Kanavi continuing to step forward, pullback coming in, JDG have brought T1 into the meat grinder, they are tearing through them effortlessly, but Faker now looking to fire that. Here comes Zayas. Potential for a hero moment from Zayas from Carrier, can they turn this one back, a lot of blinking health bars, a lot of cooldowns missing, Zayas no flash. Objective getting lower and lower. The Ren should just be able to finish it. They will grab the Baron, but Team One sticking around in the meantime, hoping to take the fight. Missing getting lower and lower, but he just got too much range, too many souls, doing too much damage. Faker goes in, but he gets absolutely Ooh. nothing. And JDG I'm worried are about of... third Drake for JDG. Clearly, much more worried about losing control oh, on the Baron it. side. Kanavi going in, immediate start to the fight. Faker now locked up. The pie does so much damage. Kanavi's early game lead put to good use here. The GA now coming out. T1, can they fight back? Zayus leaping in will get Kanavi in the end. One for one thus far. Zayus going back under the Azir Tower. The rest of T1 now need to barrel into the fight, but it's eyes on Knight. Can he get more damage down? 369 in the midst of everybody. Oh. And he's going all out into the back line. Only the support left standing. Look at that. They're gonna push straight down mid! Final in hit. Again, ball breaker charge every time. Kanavi goes for the angle. T1 forced to back up just a little bit more. But it's just slow. It's methodical. It's control of JDG. Knight pushing in the bottom side. Double cannon minions. One will be cleared away. 23 seconds left on the Baron. Can they break open this bot lane tower? Traps are there. 369 solo zoning off as meanwhile Kanavi just walks in with the Baron empowered minions just to threaten the Nexus. JDG, their chokehold on T1 and they're starting to squeeze T1. Not a lot of options left, but the arrow going wide, potentially the last glimmer of hope. Now fading in this game too, missing taking a big chunk of damage here. No wave, T1 still able to clear it. Finally bot wave now coming in. Is going for it, T1! For the angle, missing could be in trouble here. Zayas on the backside looking to lock up, trying to take down a bit more damage. Infernal Chain's not going to be very effective. Knight going golden, has a bit more space. Kanavi now on the way in. In goes Kanavi! And that should just be it. T1 holding on for dear life. Faker on contest on the backside. Gumichi going golden, but he is going to go down. The flash out will not be enough. GA up just in time to keep Kanavi standing. It's a clean ace in the base of T1 as JDG will move on and close out game two. It's a textbook game from JDG. And to me, it's the top side that made the difference. 369 with a much better game, but Kanavi, in particular, the hero of the early game. Him and Knight. Okay, so we have Azale who's heavily favoring T1. He doesn't even care about the top. <laughs> I don't Emily, care! Emily, do you agree? Well, uh, I like a lot of the answers that T1 have. I'm also really curious to see what they'll do level one. Okay, let's see. I think a huge portion of this game is still defense. level one. Can Guma and Karia try and snipe some minions to get level two? Trying as quickly as they can to lock down some of these two level two now going in. Kanavi, good damage down on Guma. Ruler flashing out of safety, ticking and burning, but he oh, will stay standing. Oh. Missing! Gets taken down! Who the early play has the uh -huh. XP advantage, missing trailing behind, but isn't going to do a lot. Ruler, however, looking for the all in the 1v1. Kumuji, nice flash to get away from the piercing arrow in the three stacks. In the meantime, fight on the top side, 369 and Knight comboing together, catching out Baker. Kanavi getting one, and spin goes the monkey. The Cyclone coming through just in time to keep the fight going, but Zeus is not down yet. Zeus looking to fire back. JDG could be in trouble, missing out firing forward. He's got level six, but does he have the mana? The Herald does drop in the end. Knight still standing. The flip back is clean. Zeus living, missing. He gets the kill, he gets the red buff carrier now running for his life. Flash out from right to safety. Still standing, ticking down, backing. Hostile takeover oh. will not connect. Handshake will not connect. It's Four. an absolute. Ulti up and available for the Wukong. Waiting, buying his time. Extra healing coming in, but Zeus is going to get a chance to use it. Holding on for now, but immediately 369, finding the kill. JDG is successful dive on top. All right, what is going to be the answer on the bottom side of the map? They send Rel down there, but look, JDG you are going to go for the dive. Kanavi's going to try and answer. TP now coming in, 369 staying alive for now, no dominance, the Gore Drinker healing now coming in, but Zeus goes in just in time, hostile takeover, will not connect on the real Kanavi, they're still focusing on Zeus, the bailout will not be enough, and they'll take a kill Kanavi, not quite! Shattering Strike, a bit more damage going through, but at the end of the day, it's JDG now, again, moving in, fighting, slowly, diligently, eyes on carry, eyes on the hostile takeover to maybe be the difference maker in this fight. Zeus on the flank, Faker over the wall, objective getting lower and lower. Weaver's Wall coming out, isolating Owner. 
Might go for the 50-50, but it's absolutely psycho. Flashes over the arrow. Vanguard oh! goes in! It's incredibly clean. JDG with the counter punch. Can they get anything back? Ruler on touch on the backside. Dragon still standing. But owner will take that away too. My god, what an engage from T1! Owner! You magnificent bitch! And oh, Zayas? Zayas? Going in on a ruler! The ruler caught shopping! Oh no! And he gets the dust blade! It's too damn clean! Kanavi trying to get something back, but it might be too little, too late. The flick back coming in. T1C, their window of opportunity. Berserk, both ADs just hitting each other. Knight now running. T1 taking the exchange. They can turn right towards Baron. Kanavi has the Ren Smite combo. There is no reason they should give this up, but Kanavi might, might just be able to take it. They're now trying to burst it down. The push over the wall doesn't connect, but it does not matter. T1 get the objective. Kanavi into the pen and he will get taken down. 369 forced to run for the hills and T1 have turned the game on its head. 369 running for his life, but Zeus is here. Look for the slice. Try to double dash through one. Not able to get the second. The Q3, the Dark and Blade cutting down. But now Ruler, maybe he can get more in the fight. Ruler not running down Zeus. Owner now running. Ruler trying to make up for the previous mistake. JDT looking to take the fight. Owner overstaying, over commitment. Baker <laughs> hit by the arrow. The fight doesn't stop. T1 missing his ult up and available. The Ash can find an angle, it can all fall apart. Zeus. Got out a bit here, forced to retreat. Dragon, objective, getting lower. Weaver's wall, bringing Knight into the fight. The entire team split. Arrow, Arrow going wide. That's massive. 369 going to the pit, trying to isolate, take out the jungler. T1 now need to turn. It's the hostile takeover, connecting. Who can get the objective? And the steal coming through in time for Kanavi, but the fight is not done. Missing on the backside. Vulnerable on his lonesome, but JDG pulling back slowly. Surely they have no jungler, but they have the objective. T1 desperate to get more. They know they need to get something here. Pushing in. 369 over the wall. Knight continuing to poke. It's diligent. It is controlled. 369 now going in, forcing out the ultimate. Missing has been caught out. Missing will go down. The Flash buying a bit more time, buying a bit more space. But he will get killed. It is only a matter of time. Zeus finishing up the fight at the end of the day. Oh, JDG now caught out again just to call it Chronicler. But Kanavi in the meantime just trying to isolate Zeus. He needs to be careful though because the rest of T1 is now coming in. Missing running for the hills, but he surely will go down. Baker grabbing the kill. 369 being forced out of the pit. Locked up. Cloud Rift. Take, T1 can't spend too long trading blows in the mid lane against this Varus. Or too long setting up and taking objectives. Topside control, topside vision control in favor of T1. A bit of vision in the pit means JDG don't have to be too scared, but they might be fishing for the angle. Arrow going onto the jungler. Flick back is there. Looking to burst owner. Looking to taste him out of the equation. The pullback is there for Guma. He will keep carry alive. Fate's call. But it's the fate of T1 to lose this Baron. Zeus playing on the edge here. Step forward. Dark and Blade, Q2, Flashed coming. away, but Zeus is certainly dead. The rest of T1 now trying to move into the jungle to compensate, but missing, zoning them off as best he can. Zeus, the Blast Cone, not enough. Back into the midst of the team, and he will get taken down. Ruler now on a rampage. And that may be the angle. That... And the heal is good in lane, but once you get out, it is very tough not to have the cleanse. Zeus on the flank, Zeus on the side. TP coming in, Faker looking to make the flank oh. against Ruler. Owner goes in, and again, the No survivors alive. 369 defends the entire team. We'll get absolutely nothing. T1 what? in the clutch for two. Damn, clean. Baker predicts Ruler's flash. He gets there first. He catches him with the ultimate. It is a clean ace. The T1 is going to go up to match point. And it's Faker that sets it up. Owner that knocks it down. Just when you think that JDG are in total control, it wasn't even about the Cloud Soul, it was a single moment from T1 that gave them this game, that set them up for a match point. Missing, he won't be enough. T1 gonna break the base, T1 gonna move on to match point, a clean fight out of nowhere, secures them their second game. These players on T1, They've accomplished so oh, play making much. options here. Aggressive lanes locked in, both in bottom lane and in top lane. And owner got the premier ganking jungler of the patch, Jarvan. Belveth, though, can get some pretty good level yeah. one. Exclusively between four versus four. Owner going in, decent bit of poke damage. Just the EQ as well as the iron spike whip. No level six again. Minus six. Carry a flash to the wall, locking up Knight. It's a clean play, flag drag, flash forward. Committing on a Knight, the shockwave now coming in. Finger turning it right back. First blood. Everybody get now. That's a 
a one hell of a magical journey. They'll get the kill back on the owner, but now they're in enemy territory. Cosmic Binding is good, but here comes Kanavi. Locked up, nowhere for Faker to go. And JDG fire back, but Zeus on the top side. They do want to commit for the all-in, but owner and Karia in the area. Right here beside him, level six. Around the corner for Carry, but still needs a bit more. Faker over the wall, though, has been locked up by the Infernal Chains above and below. Coming up for the Velvet. Faker in trouble. Not going to be able to get out of this one. The kill coming through for Kanavi. Yeah, Comes. that's. Rift Road's been started. T1 are here. Teleports are ready for both Faker and Knight. TP coming to the mid lane from Knight. TP coming into the pit from Faker. Unleashed just in time. Ruler slowed down just a bit. Objective getting lower and lower. Who's going to take it? Kanavi is going to grab it. Ulti coming out with the shockwave on the backside to lock up. Gumiyushi owner goes in, but he's not able to get much done. Kanavi dipping and diving. Zeus finally going to catch the jungler, but Ruler for now is still completely he's alive. untouched. Kanavi is living. The lightning crash comes out, and it is time for T1 to get the hell out of dodge. Zeus has burned all of his resources, but continuing to step up. Will walk away, but JDG again, they get the Herald, they keep their jungler Herald alive. Be immediately drop mid, Karia still has the ulti to deny the charge, but JDG barreling in, a lot of members here might be able to break the tower anyway, still they're gonna break it, 369 caught up. Oh! Kumiyushi can he go in for the counter engage, the flash out, Karia flashing forward, will not connect on the stun, Baker on the flank. Herald still there. Boyd Ramora still there. Zayas finds the knockup. He finds two, but there's no follow-up. He gets out the Lulu wall. Kanavi now stepping in. Knight there. Shockwave oh! comes back. The counter punch from JDG is too damn much, but T1 are still standing. T1 are still firing back. It's a one for one. Oh, these bites are just on the edge. Baker continuing to walk up on the top side. And now Carrier caught out. No magical journey available. Oh! Ruler walks in. Just gets a freebie. And looking to take tier two. Boom is here, but. What is he going to get done? Now trying to lock them up. Has flashed out to safety. Owner buying a bit more space for Guma. But they're being forced to retreat. TP already used. Zayas waiting over the wall, trying to find the jungler. It feels personal how many times this man has managed to survive, but the fate is sealed of Kanavi. T1 managed to punish him. They priority access to the pit. Zayus waiting over the wall. Again, it is all eyes on Ruler. He has to be the difference maker here. A good shockwave. The Zeri follow-up could be enough for JDG to take the fight. But for now, they're focused on the objective. Owner zoning them away. 2.5k is getting lower and lower. They will burn it down. They get what they came for. T1, do they want to stay for the fight? Knockup coming through. Owner caught up. Flag and Drag will take him out to safety. Kanavi burning on the back side. Owner still standing. With Ruler with the lightning crash now trying to go in. But goes gold and carry him by a bit more space for the rest of the team. Arrows coming in from the bars. Ruler incredibly low, but maybe. There's just maybe guy. he can turn it back. But Guma's still standing tall. <laughs> he can't walk in a range. T1 starting to feel like an inevitability. Ruler Zeri not the the lineup is perfect there. They've locked up Ruler. That's all that they need. Zayas now stepping in. Zayas desperate to get the Q3, but he cannot find the angle. Ruler now retreating. T1, will they go for more? Flash in from Owner. Kanavi now in trouble. Wild Club coming out. T1, find the angle. Barreling down the top side with the Baron. Ready to break the backs of JDG. The magical journey for T1 coming through. And perhaps the Golden Road coming to an end. Miraculous Zeri team fight. Knight Ruler, locked up. Knight is locked. The crown will not stop that. And he's only a knight. Faker knocking him down. Unstoppable. Carry a board. Eyes on Ruler. Eyes on the shockwave of Knight. Kanavi stepping in. Flash to the side from Faker. Ooh. At the cost of Barry. Kanavi! Owner walking forward, but Faker now dominating. Kanavi! A massive mistake. Carry now going in. The Ruler's untouched. Goes golden and now Ruler. Looking to take over the fight. Ruler still standing. Ruler still standing. Goomba firing back. Ruler goes down. Goomba's just better. Zeus now stepping Zeus in. Zeus snapping back on the soul unbound. We'll just break the inhibitor. He knows what he's here for. It is slow. It is controlled. It is diligence. The hype moment over for a moment as Kanavi weaves in and out of the exchange. Looking for a bit of redemption for himself. T1. Explosive fight after explosive fight has put them in a position to close this out cleanly, clinically. Death by a thousand cuts for JDG. So much riding on these last minutes. JDG trying to defend their golden road as it crumbles before them. T1, the onslaught will not stop. Third inhibitor goes down. T1 pushing in. They're not done. They've got the Baron still. 36 seconds. 5k Red Bull Baron power play backing them up. Zayas finding an initial knockup, just a bit of poke. Single misstep from JDG and T1 can instantly fully commit to the fight. It's the shockwave. Kanavi getting lower and lower, falling apart under the pressure. JDG's hope dwindling. They've taken down BLG. They've taken down LNG. It is not LPL versus LCK. It is T1 versus the LPL. And they like those odds as they move.
to finals. Baker, over 10 years into his career, will head to another World Finals. At the head of this squad that has had so much success, but still chasing the cup. The highs and lows of this roster over the last two years. The hype in spring after they won and one of the best splits of all time. And not able to deliver again at MSI. Again at World. This is a composition that's really hard to engage into. And if T1 ever lose map control, trying to get onto Maokai, trying to take down individual car uh, targets against the Kench is going to be extremely difficult. And when you're second to those objectives with Maokai saplings in every brush, yep. you're going to be getting poked out by the Jace, which could be difficult. T1. But... And I'm going to be looking towards how are the junglers able to punish the oh, lack of flashes. W is fake against the charm. He stops it to the skies, but I don't think it's going to be enough because his flash is already down and first blood goes to Shaohu! And simply incredible throughout the World Championship. Certainly has. And now Baker is going to dash in, finds the charm under the top catch. Baker has to get out of there though, can't be a snare for the hostile takeover. Gets so much work done, the devour's in, but the kill's there for Ona. Shaohu now going down low as Baker dashes forward once again. But it looks like they'll have to settle for one and a just arrow. woke up, T1 finds the angle and Weibo give up the Herald and a kill. Exactly, and maybe gonna lose some farm down on bot side as well, because Chris has no TB, but Zayas. Nature's Grasp comes in, he gets pulled back, he's interrupted from the ultimate. Zayas does get a knock up there and a shield, but I think he's still dead. And there it is, the answering kill from the shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Move speed turns out pretty good. Uh-huh, it's a pretty good stat. And uh, Zayas not going to, uh, he's actually gonna utilize some move speed to move out of Ooh, the Infernal Chains. Look at nice that. Transition. Proving your point immediately, Ooh, as well. you way, love way. to see it. Uh, owner is here though, it's going to be a 2v2, Zayas taking a bit of damage as the Q comes down, there's the ulti, Nature's Grasp, but look at the knockups, the kickback, Weiwei punches him out of his oh! the Dawning Shadow flies through to help get the kill onto Zayas, it looked good for T1 and Weibo struck Might back. be getting ganked. Yeah, Kerry is going to move on up here as Zayas is going to break those chains, Kerry is looking for that handshake, Angle is already, the Shy has done a fair bit of damage, but I don't think it is going to be enough as it's Alco gaming for the Shy and he will go down, Ona grabs that now, kill. Dying there with no TP does mean there's going to be a pretty big push. You can see Guma, of course, yeah. you have to carry, compare that with Crisp's goal. Oh, brings him back in with a twisted advance, the kickback as well as Weiwei gets out the punch, and now Shaohu coming on in, oh, is going to burn down, and no bailout for you, Light's in a bit of trouble with the so charm. Sofanom T1 just a little bit here, four versus three in this moment, but Faker's wrapping around from the top side of the fight, the Shy pretty far away from this one, and Zayas is moving in, gets over the wall, there's the ult, it's going to be dodged as he gets himself out of there with the unbound soul, well, it looks and like isn't even going to give him the opportunity, it's oh, Oh, there's the kick flash. Shaohu's going to be pushed into Faker. The flash forward, but the charm is going to miss. What? The Pierce doesn't land it. Shaohu just walks it up. No worries there at all as Crisp is under the turret. They throw down Harold, but Zayas has found two with the ultimate life. Goes down so low, but isn't going to survive. Weiwei trying to get himself out of there, and the Shy is given up on. Weiwei running the wrong direction, but they at least get the dragon. Weibo get the dragon, but T1 get the kill. Shahu lucky to get out of that one, but Weiwei, he's going home in the body bag. Oh, Guma. Your opponent, but Guma. Could be in a bit of run. trouble here as Crisp looks for it. The immediate cleanse does get out of the way. Nature's Cross isn't going to connect, but there is a twisted advance. Hostile takeover across everyone, though, but the Shy is just gigantic. Guma trying to hop away. The fates call the knockups, and meanwhile, Weiwei is going down. Baker collects it before falling down. Crisp has to go though because he's so incredibly low and Zayas is tearing them to shreds. Weibo lying on the floor now as T1 look to tidy up Crisp and they won that team fight even better than the loss. Guma refuses to go down. Karia saves him coming in with the hostile takeover in T1. They're on the barrier. Yeah, well, it's not exactly behind Xiaohu but he's pretty fast as Xiaohu's going to avoid the charm for now. Shock Blast connects onto Faker there as well. He's still going to look for that reset angle, and now with the Baron buff in tow, T1 feel like they don't need a reset to try and break open the base of Weibo here in Game 1 of the Finals. Nature's Grasp flying forward, Ona still has that GA, oh. remember Chris going down so incredibly low, Zayas just executes the Chai up to the side, and there is another one, this guy's Yone is just absurd! And the inhibitor's going to go down, Weiwei is burning there as well, as now Xiaohu tries to be the hero, but it does not work out, and I think T1 
one. I'm just gonna end game one here. And the early game, T1 not able to get a bunch of crucial kills, but they don't let it face them. They are able to find the one skirmish they're looking for, take the Baron, and from that point on, Weibo doesn't get to fight back. And now one and zero here in the world final. T1 on the red side as well, going to be able to walk away victorious. It was an early game composition and it was executed very well, but I felt like there were angles for Weibo to go back and try and retcon and figure it out for game two. I mean, it's tough, right? Weibo did win out in a lot of those early game skirmishes. They were getting the kills, but T1 played an immaculate objective game. Thinking and let's face point. T1 has an incredible 1-3-1. They really can attack those side lanes so heavily with the Nocturne as well. And you do have that flanking top laner that I was talking about as the final piece, Sol and Maokai ult. You have the hostile takeover, you have the Nocturne ult, you have Having a flanking... Having that can enable you. As I say, that owner is in top. Yeah, Zayas dashing forward, the needlework is out. Snip, snip, going to connect, but doesn't do too much. And in goes Orna, the flash oh! out. Oh, it was incredible from the Shy. Orna oh! gets taken down to, oh my goodness, about one health. But will be able to walk away, but I don't think he's going to be excited about ganking the Shy anytime soon. Although Zayas what? is just going to go. No! That is just not fair. That is the Shy encapsulated. Don't off the bot wave, so T1 Whoa. punishing so heavily here. Yeah, the flash forward from Carrier finds the handshake this time. The Infernal Chains come in, he's lit on fire, he's feared, and Kumayushi cashes in. Not been able to claim that big title they've been chasing, but Zayas showing up so far. Yeah, another teleport to come in here as they do manage to secure this Rift Herald. We'll see whether Weibo can get themselves out of here. Light gonna be hostile takeover, but he's the only one. And now Zayas looking for the target. Faker dives in though as well. He's gonna collect the first with the help of Ona. The Shy goes down, the rest of Weibo will scatter, but they do get the objective and only lose one for now. And Weibo gonna be happy that they, at the very least they did get the Herald. But it did have to invent. He does put that ward down. That is going to get there. The Drake going down very, very low. And now the paranoia comes in. Faker looks for the spear rush. And he does find it. The hostile takeover is massive. And they get rid of Light immediately. Weiwei taken down for the double kill for Ona. Xiaohu now trying to get some damage in the back. And it does take down the Nocturne. But it's Chris fighting on the bottom side of the map. And Kumiuchi is going to cash in once again. And T1 wiped the fight. And it's T1 winning everywhere. The fight breaks down into multiple skirmishes. He's cashing in. And Weibo trying yeah. to start something here. Here's another one the nature's grasp they all line up behind but it's a decent charm to come through their hostile takeover for some phenomenal disengage and it looks like t1 they don't want to deal with it faker dashes over the wall remember they don't have a turret here the charm he's going to split them carrier tries to get oh! the rest. he goes forward and then just explodes and then Ona thinks that that's his moment it's a double again for this nocturne and he survives the logistics protocol coming in being able to see these iconic picks and their comfort is working out so well oh, paranoia comes in once again as the Flash out from the Shy may not be enough. They're under the turret. Ona was tanking it up. And Zayas is going to finish it in a turret. Should now be next on the clock. And because the rest of T1 is standing guard, Weibo can't try and turn the fact that Ona is towards are responding. And T1, they're looking for more. Yep, Shahu already taking a bit of poke damage. Light will turn up. As four members are here, teleport event not available for the Shy, but they dive in. The turret goes down. The needlework just rips the center to shreds. And Zayas just by himself destroying everyone. Hostile takeover comes in. Light has the cleanse, but you can't cleanse death. It's a triple kill for Zayas, and they'll get to work on the inhibitor. It might just be the game right here. Zayas playing like his namesake. Oh God, this guy is going crazy in the finals. And extraordinary assist helps clear up this second Nexus turn and T1 at match point already. And by the end of that game, the kill score is 1 to 14. That was a little bit uh, even more one sided than the last game. And T1 really. On the back of Zayas, the man who had been performing... Barring any major owner or carrier interference, you're not going to have the best of time. Same for bot lane, Ferris Bard, going to be really tough to deal with. So I do think that Weibo have a lot of prio set up and compare that or uh, add the bell to that. he did just use his lightning rush, so I think he's in trouble. Yeah, there's the flash Q3 from Zayas. The Shy is in trouble. The lightning rush is on cooldown. He gets slowed down by the cripple and the Q's going to land. Ona secures it and that is first blood for T1. And, and
we will see if Weiwei is able to maybe make a play towards bot side as owner making his way over to mid. Yeah, that's going to safeguard forward there as Faker dashes in and Xiaohu will survive. Faker just barely managing to walk away Whoa. as now they come in. Oh, the grand entrance, phenomenal from Kerry. We'll see whether he can survive though. Oh! He's trying to get out the piercing arrow, will do it. And Weibo Gaming even out the scoreline. Three versus one, he does try and get out. There's the world ender. He's trying to avoid all of this CC and it's not going to work. There's the kill for Wei Wei. CS advantage, Lightning Rush to get him out of there. His owner just mini stump kick into the wall. That is going to be the execution, but the ultimate is going to be there from the Shine. After the flash, he will survive, and now it's Wei Wei's turn. Can he actually get this one as owner? About 50%. The safeguard to try and get out the flash oh. for the knockup. It's still there, and Crisp comes in for the kill. They get some knockups. Zayas will survive, but not the least. In. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, the Blade Call. and Carrier are so hard to attack in a lot of these situations. Oh, Q going to connect there. Nice little knockup as Carrier tries to find it. There's the quickness on to two. The kick gets the knockup onto Xiaohu. The Empress of Ide only gets Ona, but that will get him out. But Weiwei's not going to be so lucky. The Shy got in here, and now he might be in trouble. He breaks the chains, but is he still going to be able to get out? Kumiyushi decides he wants to fight light towards the bottom side. That was the right call. Seiyas grabs the double kill, and Weibo lose out on the fight. And while the laning setup is there this time around for Weibo, their early game looking a lot better. The skirmishes, they're still not able to make work, although teleport coming in. Yeah, teleport from this top side of the river. Xiaohu coming in, looking for the opportunity, doesn't have the ultimate. They secure the Drake, does T1. Grand Entrance not going to find the target there. On to Crisp as the Tempered Fate comes in. Faker trying to play Bouncer to keep his team alive. And the ultimate doesn't really work out here from Crisp. Still, they don't lose too much, even though Xiaohu is on the other side of the map. And they're buying time for the fact that there is... Just so, on Weibo's side of the fight. Now Faker just going to backflip away from the knockup from Weiwei. So Weibo not going to find too much there. There's Ona in the river. Zayas just clearing out this Gromp. Wanting to get some control back in. Looks like T1. Happy to start off this Drake, although it's not behaving itself all that much. Carrier with all of his buttons up and available. The engage potential is going to be there. Control War just eviscerated here. As T1 trying to do the same thing. Teleport now to come forward. Azaeus on that flank angle. The Shy now here. And Gumiushi pretty safe now on that back line. Look at Carrier though. It's so hard for Weibo to walk up because Carrier is on that sideline. They know he's there. Yeah, he flashes in. He finds himself. The charm on the four is there. It is the ultimate from the Shy, but it just doesn't quite do enough. They try and get out, but Fika has the perfect execution and locks down his fellow ninja. Xiaohu now taking a whole lot of damage in Faker. He's in the shroud. He's toying with him. It's a double cast. What? Order! And back in again. It's a triple for Faker. Zayas is going to be out of block down the next one. Faker eventually goes down, but it's four for him and Garrett. has really been impressive in team fights, and it just feels like a rejuvenated Ooh. Faker. And he goes again. Is now Ona looking for that opportunity as well. Backflip connects also as the perfect execution comes forward. Has he overstepped the answer? Is no, because he had the stopwatch anyway, and now the cavalry comes in crisp. The next to go down, Weiwei. Wei. He's under a turret. Oh! Zayas flashes on top. The lethal Aatrox going to get it done. And T1, they feel like it's Baron time. Look at the next it's Baron. And they're going to win the series cool. in Carrier. Going to get knocked up here as Ona comes on over. He's here to protect his support. The quickness ties them all up. And Xiaohu going to be the next target. He finds two with the Empress Divide. But crisp just evaporates. Weiwei Wei going to suffer the same fate as Zayas is on the warpath. Light able to sidestep, finds the chains of corruption, but there's not enough damage. Xiaohu decent flash to try and get himself out, but he's not out of the woods yet as Faker tidies up that kill, and they are just so far ahead. Ona secures Light with a sonic wave, and the Shy finds himself alone heading back towards his base. That's the double kill. That's the clean That's but it's heartbreaking as now they take a magical journey over Zayas. He likes this one though. One versus three. He's absorbing so much. The Empress Divide. It comes in, but he's still alive. What? He's going on. Baker Tidy's up the first. Everyone's just exploding. It's way, way trying to get something done, but it does not matter. T1 are too strong. Four times T1 has lost in a game five. Four times they've been knocked out, and four times they have got back up for this moment. It was seven years since their last, a decade since their first. The SKT legacy has been reignited. T1 will be your 2023 world champions.
It took them two years to win a title again. Spring 2021, this roster came up. They stomped the LCK. They stomped the playoffs. And then at MSI, we started to see the cracks. And then last year at Worlds, it felt like they'd been able to recuperate from all that. But it wasn't the case. It took them one more year to take the lessons that they'd learned in 2022. And so many had doubts after what had happened in the summer split. But you can see that joy on this team. And you can see the devastation on the side of Weibo as they look on. T1, they must feel like this is a long time coming. They had to work so incredibly hard to get here to this stage. And how much sweeter that victory has to be after time and time and time again. This T1 roster tasted the bitter defeat. They were the ones on the receiving end of these losses. Uh -oh. It started to feel like they might never be able to do it. You can see as we head towards the trophy ceremony presented by Mercedes-Benz. Oh, the Summoner's Cup, beautiful, crafted by Tiffany & Co. T1 finally hoisting it with the new name. SKT was their name when they had the first three, and now this team that so many adore will finally hoist the Summoner's Cup. And they've waited for it. Last year, the story wasn't about them. But this year it is. All the pent-up emotion for this team, all the disappointment, it's led to this. And what an incredible run. With four LPL teams remaining, T1 were the last team from any other region, let alone the LCK. They took down BLG 2-0. They swept LNG. They crumbled JDG's Golden Road. And now, here in the finals, another sweep, absolute domination against Weibo. There is no doubt who the greatest team in the world today is. And you can see Faker especially looking on while his teammates are raising the cup as well. He's done it three times. This is the first time, and he'll hoist it for the fourth.